Welcome to episode 35. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Arumba. Uh, the last episode ended uh, rather abruptly. I thought that um, I thought I was running out of time, and so I had to break it. But anyway, where we left off last, we had just been slaughtered by the Holy Roman Emperor because he's a jerk. And um, I remember I was trying to connect these two. How are we doing on that? Connecting. We need another one here and probably another one here. It's about 500 gold. We'll connect these two. Get it all united as one trade zone here under Afstenkirka. And we can start to steal these other plots, the other posts over there. So my, um, my goal for this episode is to try to stay at peace. Last episode didn't really work out so well. Still not very happy about that, but what can you do? I noticed that our marshal's pretty poor, so I think I might replace him. This guy is not a count, so he's just a, a courtier. There's really no risk in replacing him. He already likes us quite a bit, so... Um, yeah, let's go ahead. We'll get uh, this guy. He's just a tiny bit better, but it, it's important that you get the most that you can out of it. And how are we doing? I think we still have revolt risk. Nope. Okay, we're good. Okay. We'll let the game take a little bit, get things going. Discovered a plot. Somebody seeks to kill me. That, my friend, is unacceptable. Nope, he seeks to kill my son. Botstein Johansson. This guy wants to kill him. This is a great time to... So we have a right to imprison him uh, because of that. And he has no heir. So, yeah. Huh. I'm willing to risk it. I'm not going to worry about um, replacing the marshal and having him... He wants to kill somebody, too. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm not going to replace the advisor and try to try to maximize the arrest chance. I'm just going to outright arrest him. Not that guy, but this guy. And he's locked away safely. A couple months from now, he's going to ask to be released or ask to be sent home for home confinement and I'm gonna put him in the oublette which will decrease his health by two and most likely he'll die soon and when that happens we get his money do we want our grandson the genius just patient and cynical person to be cynical no we don't no more cynical and I think we still have some people to contend with here nope we're doing okay <laughs> the lunatic yeah, let's, let's get rid of this guy so that the lunatic is the heir. I think things are about to turn. Um, we've had a lot of excitement recently with the Holy Roman Emperor and, you know, demolishing Sweden. It's nice seeing our name on the map now. But um, next up, we're going to basically start building up more of our holdings, get some retinue going. So we'll spend some time talking about how the retinue system works. And then uh, and we need to start rapidly expanding. Very, very quickly. Pretty much as soon as these trade posts are done is when I'm going to start working on that. And we need to get out of these wars, too. Oh, boo, he caught us. This is one of our grandsons, the nice guy. Got the genius trait, so we'll educate him. We're doing pretty well with giving him the right traits. Not going to create the titles yet. Not worrying about the weak claim. Don't want to arrest the count. All right, we're looking good. I, I wonder if we could kill this guy. He doesn't like us because of that breaking the truce thing. If we murder him next, then we can destabilize the Holy Roman Emperor Empire and also... Um, hopefully reduce the cost of building those trade posts. So as soon as this guy dies, the other guy's next up. Failure. We're not the best at intrigue, apparently. Got fantastic diplomacy, though. My Grand Mayor, I'm pleased to report the 
vast majority of the population of Hayland. Holland. I always thought Holland was with an O. Holland. But apparently it's Hayland. So Hayland is now converted. We don't get the piety. It wasn't us. So we still need to move our chaplain, though. So yes, we've got Lollard. Lollard is spreading. We actually can see that on the map as well. Let's see if there's any holdings that we have. Apparently I kept this castle. I forgot to give it away. Hmm. It doesn't have any penalty. But, um... I'm going to get rid of it anyway, just so we have one more person. One more set of chancellor or uh, counselors that can try to convert it. As was discussed in a previous episode. Heir to the Grand City. Nope. Nope. Not going to give it to my grandson. This guy will do. Unfortunately, that makes this guy count now. That's okay, though. I mean... I just want to make sure that, that gets converted. Okay, what's the next coastal province? This one... No city on this island. These two are already converted. So we've basically got... This county here is not ours. This one makes the most sense to try to convert. Ostrogotland. In fact, we own this one. This would be a very good one for us to convert. You can see, even though there's still this religious penalty, it's not the biggest, the most uh, significant penalty. Um, it's only minus 50%, so this is still making some money. In fact, it'd make a lot more if it wasn't suffering from consumption. But um, we need to continue to convert. Gosh, for crying out loud, this plot needs to succeed. So while we're waiting, just a quick plug, um, I did just start recording the Dwarf Fortress Masterwork Let's Play. Um, I'm going to do those in parallel, I'm going to do both of them at the same time, and um, how did he die? I'm not really worried about it, I guess. So yeah, I'm going to be doing both at the same time. If you haven't heard of the game or haven't played the game, then uh, I'd recommend you take a look at it. It's a lot of fun. First few episodes are going to be explanatory. And then, uh, you know, review how, how the game works, and then we're going to start playing. Probably going to be pretty similar to this. Looks like England is imploding. That's good. France is having some difficulty with Toulouse. Yep. We just, that's like the fifth time, I think, that that has failed. And <laughs> immediately we go for another. Hmm. Finally. And we were caught again. Okay, um, let's see if we can murder you. Where, what are our chances? Probably not very high. But there might be... No, that's not going to happen. That's too bad. Okay. Well. We could always keep the lunatic on the... Uh, keep that lunatic there. Not gonna worry about it for just a moment. Not gonna plot. Try to go easy on the murders. Let's back off just a little bit. What are you doing? It's attacking this guy. Attacking somebody. Basically, I want these trade posts. Yeah, there we go. Now we can start sealing trade posts again. I was waiting for that one over there to finish. Need to continue expanding our income. If you're not growing, you are dying. There you go. He wants us to to send him to home confinement. Uh, no. In fact, we'll just do that. 
The oublet. French word. I believe it means to forget. Oublié. Basically, it's like some really, really dark corner of the dungeon where people go to be forgotten about. Okay, while we're doing all that, we should probably be upgrading holdings at the same time. What can we do in Visby? Now, there is a risk, of course, to upgrading the primary holding of the Republic, and that's that if you don't win the election, then all the money you spent to upgrade this city benefits your enemy patrician, the one that won the election. So. If, you, if you're worried about not winning the election, I wouldn't recommend you upgrade this. I'm not worried. Small arsenal. I want money. I want things that generate income. There's a compounding effect. The earlier in the game you can build income generating buildings, the more of a benefit you get. So... In general, I think it takes about mm, probably about 30 years to have a net positive impact from building a, a holding. Like if your holding is going to generate uh, three gold and it costs 200, then with all the multipliers, it'll take you about 30 years to earn back the money that you spent. So if the game is going to last more than 30 years, you should probably do the upgrade. The only disadvantage is that it's a short-term loss, long-term gain, meaning that if you needed that money for mercenaries, you might have wished you didn't do it. But in the long term, it'll be a beneficial thing to do. Okay, these are held by... Straubin and somebody else. So let's go ahead and get rid of this Straubin. Continue to maximize the holdings we can steal. Oh, and the other thing I forgot is, um, yes, so tomorrow is the release of StarCraft Heart of the Swarm. And I'm probably going to do a little bit of playing of that as well. Fortunately for you, um, I'm recording some of these in advance, so there shouldn't really be a break in releasing on this series. Probably be releasing at least one episode a day, even while recording the other shows, so nothing to worry about there. In fact, by the time you probably hear this message, it will already have been released for a few days. So, do we want him to be honest? Our genius grandson. Yes, we do. And we also want him to be kind or just. Kind is good. It's funny, because we're kind and charitable and just, yet we murder everyone. <laughs> it's not exactly what I would consider to be kind. So let's see. Yep, these should be connected now, I believe, as far as... Yeah, they don't get the connected to capital bonus, but they are connected to the trade zone. So 93% increased income on those. And yeah, just a little quick little bit of mental math here. Let's see. Let's say we built a trade post here. 216 gold. It's going to net us about 12 gold a year in income. That's what most of these are making. Not that one. That's not ours. Yeah, a little bit... About almost 12. So that's going to be about a 6% return on investment. I'm doing my math right. I think I am. Yep. Versus if we were to upgrade an existing trade post, the merchant enclave would give us one tax income, which would then be multiplied by our multipliers. So about 2 gold or 2%. Yeah, it's still far, far more efficient to 
Just build more trade posts. And I'm probably only going to switch over to upgrading them um, when I get tired of dealing with looking for new trade posts. Speed four. We're gonna let some, you know, times of peace go quicker. I want to try to get uh, get more in this this episode. Might have slowed down because naturally the last time I did this, we immediately got into some trouble. But parent subject has been converted. Grand our our son. Apparently we have a son about the same age as our grand grandchildren. As long as he's Swedish, he can have him. Sure. He's got good stats. Get some more boats. I know we're going to need those eventually. Somebody died in our dungeons. Oh no, it's a revolt. Actually got a little bit of an army now. Because we've got all that... We, we See, this is a big thing. Like Before, we only had our main county and a few cities. Now, even though these are still suffering from the recently conquered penalties, like religious, some of them aren't, and so now we're getting some levy from those castles, which we've actually got, you know, almost 3,000 men just off of the, uh, just off those very few units that are actually available. I'm not really too worried about being as efficient as possible. They're, they'll beat this army pretty easily. There we go. Everything's looking pretty good. We're doing decent. I mean, it's um, at this point it does get a little bit repetitive when you're not at war. Um, you know, it's just plot steal, plot steal, build, plot steal, convert, and um, this is that point where it definitely starts to snowball and go quicker and quicker and quicker. And Mercia, hmm. what are you up to, big guy? 41,000 men now. Hmm. We've only got three. We might be wise to stockpile some money. And let's start working on some of this. So. We built the Fortified Vault an episode or two ago, and now the next rank will give us this plus one Intrigue. And he's made the Kaiser, Kaiser like us a little bit better. So, let's work on getting the next rank. I'm going to start to heavily prioritize this as well. Apparently Denmark wants to interrupt my period of peace, you jerk! Formal declaration of war. Okay, maybe we'll have to hold off on the Fortified Vault. Denmark. Denmark, what are you thinking? Contested title, Duchy of Skane. He wants it back. How much military do you have, buddy? 5,100 to our 3,100, except that we have 1,000 gold a year in income. I think you're going to be screwed, dude. And when you lose, you're going to owe us 340 gold. So he's going to help pay for our mercenaries. And, um, yeah. Okay, well, in the next episode then, we will push back Denmark. Thank you for watching. See you soon.